Welcome to the Manic Metallic Podcast, where we respect fashion's past, analyze fashion's present, and get excited about fashion's future. I'm Liberty Gaiman, founder and creative principal of fashion media company Manic Metallic. Several times per week, I'll bring you episodes about exciting things happening in fashion, discussion about current issues facing the industry, and the places and people that have made the fashion industry great. Be sure to subscribe to our newsletter and follow us on Instagram at the Manic Metallic Podcast and at Manic Metallic, both linked in our show notes. Now, let's get into today's episode. Welcome to the Manic Metallic Podcast. I'm Liberty, your host. In our second installment of our What Was series, we're going to talk about one of the first department stores in the United States, created in the birthplace of American democracy. We're going to talk about Wanamaker's, created in Philadelphia. Wanamaker's was opened in April of 1876 by Philadelphia businessman John Wanamaker as an American response to European markets like Francis Lazal's and England's Royal Exchange. The building chosen was a former Pennsylvania Railroad depot located at the intersection of 13th Street and Market Street in the heart of the city. The merchandise, which Wanamaker planned to market to upscale clients, consisted of a combination of clothing and other specialty items like furniture and toys. By 1879, the store had 49 different departments. John Wanamaker had a few practices at Wanamaker's, which proved to be innovative for the time. For example, he is widely viewed as the first to use price tags. Before he introduced price tags, the standard in retail was to haggle prices until the retailer thought that you were within a range acceptable enough for them to sell you goods. This could take hours, so the price tag was a large time saver for both retailers and consumers. In 1876, the store opened an in-store restaurant, becoming one of the first to do so. He also promoted a money-back guarantee to customers, which was unheard of at the time. Additionally, Wanamaker's printed the first copyrighted store advertisement, which that ad brought in a lot of money because people saw that it was truthful and that wasn't necessarily always the case back then. Wanamaker's was the first store to install electric lighting, and it became the first store to install elevators. And he was one of the pioneers of the phrase, the customer is always right. Those of us that have worked in customer service would beg to disagree with this, but John Wanamaker made a lot of money off of building his business around this phrase, so maybe he knew something that the rest of us don't. With regard to clothing, Wanamaker's wanted to promote high turnover and low prices. To do so, he created three store sales. White sales happened in January, opportunity sales happened in February, and midsummer sales happened in July. In addition to the store having its own house brands, John Wanamaker sent 10 buyers to Europe every year to return with clothing that conveyed style and quality. Now, during this time, John Wanamaker also became involved with politics. He donated $10,000 to candidate Benjamin Harrison's campaign, who was a Republican. When Harrison won, Wanamaker became the postmaster general of the country. Wanamaker saw it fit to fire thousands of Democrats from their positions and replace them with Republicans. This was troublesome, but tensions cooled down eventually. He remained in this position from 1889 to 1893. I did research and I couldn't actually verify whether or not he was running his business while being the Postmaster General. So, yeah, just not sure of that. Now, in 1911, the current Wanamaker building that now houses Macy's Center City, was open at 13 to market. It was dedicated by President William Howard Taft, the only department store to be dedicated by a sitting president. Built by Chicago architect Daniel H. Burnham, it contained 12 floors and took up an entire block. At the time, it was the largest retail store in the world. Inside, the store included a 150-foot-high grand court containing what was at the time, the second largest pipe organ in the world, and what became the world's largest fully operational pipe organ in 1930, after Wanamaker had a team of organ builders to expand it. The store also included the Crystal Tea Room, modeled after the tea room of Robert Morris's mansion. Robert Morris was a primary financier of the American Revolution. 
Wanamaker's American patriotism showed itself in his stores in a few ways, one of which was the Eagle regalia found around the Philadelphia Wanamakers. There is a 2,500-pound bronze eagle statue placed in the middle of the store, which shoppers often use as a meeting spot. When a resident said, meet me at the eagle, everyone knew what it meant. Wanamaker's religion was also mixed in with his business practices. He would not advertise on Sundays, for example. He also wouldn't serve alcohol in his restaurant establishments because he supported the temperance movement. Additionally, he believed that art had the power to transfer morality onto observers, so he kept a large contemporary art collection on display in his store for shoppers to peruse while purchasing clothing and other goods. To accompany the artworks, he published pamphlets for store customers explaining the paintings through a political and religious lens. John Wanamaker also gave workers plenty of benefits not typical for the time, but that's because he hated unions. In fact, he fired any employee that became involved with unions. In terms of the aforementioned benefits, Wanamaker founded the Wanamaker Commercial Institute for his employees to learn various topics such as finance, English, and math. Employees also received perks such as free health care and pensions. He truly wanted his people to avoid union activity, so he gave them as much as possible from his business. Wanamakers also had a New York location at 770 Broadway near Union Square, and at its height had about 16 locations in the mid-Atlantic region of the U.S. Business began to decline, however, when it began losing sales to other department stores like Bloomingdale's and Macy's. The store remained in the Wanamaker family until his heirs sold it in 1978. The Wanamaker building was designated as a National Historic Landmark that same year. After this, Wanamakers went through a series of ownership changes until finally becoming a Macy's in 2006. At the time of John Wanamaker's death on December 12, 1922, at age 84, he had an estimated fortune of $100 million, much of that from Wanamakers. He had amassed nine homes, some of them being in Philadelphia, New York, London, Paris, and Cape May Point. So Wanamakers made him very wealthy while revolutionizing the fashion and retail industries in multiple ways. That's it for this podcast. Join us next week. We've got a lot of good topics in store for you. See you next time. Thanks for listening. If you got value out of today's episode, it'd mean a lot to me if you rate, review, and subscribe to the Manic Metallic Podcast. Be sure to tell all of your fashion and client friends and co-workers about the podcast as well. This would really help us to spread our message about fashion being an art, discipline, and force for societal change. And don't forget to stay in touch with us by subscribing to the Manic Metallic newsletter and following us on Instagram. Feel free to reach out to us through either of those means. I'd love to hear from you. I'll link these all in the show notes. You're the best. See you next episode.